Excellencies, dear colleagues, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to who is with us on WebEx and to who is now joining us on Facebook Live. The Geneva Environment Network has the pleasure to welcome you today virtually for a high-level briefing on the fifth session of the United Nations Environment Assembly, the world's highest level decision-making body on the environment. For those who don't know yet our platform, we are a network of more than 100 institutions and secretariats based in Geneva that make this region one of the global hubs for environmental governance. Administrated by the United Nations Environment Program and supported by Switzerland, we organize various networking activities, including regular multi-stakeholder roundtables and briefings on major environmental trends, involving also the permanent missions to the United Nations based in Geneva. Prior to the last sessions of the United Nations Environmental Assembly, we welcome uh, the previous presidents uh, of the Assembly to Geneva at the International Environment House, for in-person briefing sessions um, to the large international committee and permanent missions active in this field from our region. Today, um, we are holding this virtual session and welcoming uh, the actual president of the assembly and other guests. As usual, the video of this event, the presentations made, as well as a summary will be available online on the webpage of this event. You can raise your questions in the Q&A box throughout the event, and we will address them in the last part of this session. Bruno Pozzi, the director of the Europa Office of the United Nations Environment Programme, will moderate this session, introduce you to today's guests, and guide you throughout the event. Bruno, over to you. Thanks a lot, uh, Diana, and really a pleasure to be with you, Excellency, Mr. President, if I may call you like that, uh, dear colleague Jorge. I think we, we also have Ambassador Perez, who's trying to join us. He's got a small technical uh, 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 problem, but he's going to be with us in a minute. It's really a pleasure to be uh, with you today. It is, as Diana said, a tradition that we host uh, an event a few days before UNEA here in International Geneva today online, so reaching a worldwide audience, but really important because as the environmental agenda is set by UNEA and is defined uh, together with 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 the member states uh, at the UN Environment Assembly in Nairobi, uh, the, uh, the 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 multilateral capital of Geneva is also very much involved in in implementing this agenda and making it cross-cutting for all the United Nations family. So this is why it's important, and this is why as well at the beginning of 2021, as we enter the last decade for uh, uh, the implementation of the SDG. We hold uh, an ambitious uh, UNEA. We'll hear from you, uh, 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 Excellency, on this ambition. Uh, and But before that, we will hear from my colleague Jorge uh, uh, Laguna, who is Director for Governance Affairs of the United Nations Environment Programme. Uh, what is UNEA and, and, and where we stand a few days before uh, the first part of this UNEA? Then we'll hear, uh, Minister, from you on the presidency priorities the ambition that we have, uh, Franz Perez, uh, uh, the ambassador for the environment for Switzerland and a good friend of UNEP, will also then talk about the ambition that he sees for uh, 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 the, the environmental agenda. And we'll hear then from uh, Patricia Heidegger the views of civil society, uh, from uh, Patricia being the director for global policies of the sustainability and, and sustainability, sorry, of the environment, uh, uh, European Environment Bureau, excuse me. And uh, uh, before going to Q&A, we will be joined uh, by uh, our Deputy Executive Director, Joyce Msuya, who will uh, also talk about the ambition of the medium-term strategy that hopefully we will adopt at UNEA. So with this, we really go into the substance uh, and I really appreciate that we are so many online. I think it's an event that has gathered a lot of attention and I'll uh, pass the word to Jorge for uh, five, six minutes of introduction to UNEA 5 itself. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bruno, and uh, wonderful colleagues that support and provide a service to the uh, excellent platform that it is the Geneva Environment Network. This network, and I am extremely pleased to see we are counting 190, 98, almost 200 participants by now. It is the premier platform to engage and discuss within the United Nations family in Geneva on the future of the environmental agenda and those pressing topics that matter 
for the United Nations to have a very strong environmental pillar in the context of sustainable development. We have had in the past several opportunities to engage, despite the challenges of COVID, to be able to pass on the message of the work that we're doing in Nairobi to prepare for the Environment Assembly. So we are now at the cost of organizing the first ever virtual United Nations Environment Assembly. And this has only been possible owing to the commitment that member states have done to ensure that the pillar of the environment is not relegated within the ongoing discussions and due to the pandemic. I am pleased to remind you, as we have done in the past, that the fifth UNEA will be held from the 22nd of February to the 23rd of February 2021 and will be preceded by an open-ended committee of permanent representatives, the preparatory body of the United Nations Environment Assembly, which will be held also for a duration of two days, comprising of 15 and 16 February. Why these dates? And let me just take a second. That is because countries that are in the driving seat of the environmental agenda, like member states that are represented and leading and following discussions, even from Geneva, on, on, on UNEP matters, and also representatives like Switzerland ambassador have thought that we should not delay the adoption of the medium-term strategy and the program of work of UNEP that you will hear also by executive director, deputy executive director, Joyce Musuya later today. But they also felt that ministers of the environment should have a platform and should have a voice to discuss how COVID is impacting the environment and what role the environment can play in uh, building uh, a, a more sustainable, building forward a more sustainable recovery and providing inputs to the global processes of the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. So this is why member states have agreed to hold a, a UNEA that is short, that is lean, but also with the promise of gathering in Nairobi in February 2022 to make a commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the United Nations Environment Program and to hold a fully fledged assembly with a number of resolutions and outcomes and events. I will just take a little second to tell you that despite this being perceived as a small UNEA, it's by no means a little event. There are going to be, thanks to the energy and motivation of stakeholders and member states, quite a number of supporting activities and platforms that will help us advocate for a very successful UNEA and a great kickoff towards UNEP at 50. I will just quote three events, but we will be sharing with all of you the program of activities that we are preparing as UNEP in the days prior to UNEA. These include a global major groups and stakeholder forum of which Patricia and colleagues from the stakeholder community are heavily engaged and are leading. It also includes our first ever Youth Environment Assembly, which as of today has gathered almost 5,000 young people's registrations and will spread out through three days prior to UNEA to discuss from a youth perspective, from a youth left perspective, uh, what UNEA can do to change young people's lives. It will also have a United Nations Science Policy Business Forum for the Environment, which is a premier platform in which we bring the environmental, uh, the science policy interface, the environmental community and the solution makers that are bringing change in the crowd. And this science policy business forum will also take place ahead of UNEA. So we are pleased that we are ready to host you, to welcome you virtually in Nairobi. We have sent, if you are a member state representative, all the rest relevant communications and all the reports are out. Thank you, colleagues, for displaying the webpage of UNEA, the notification, the agenda, the reports of the executive director. The table is set for you to come and agree on an ambitious program of work and chart the way forward from your ministers or your head of organization perspective, what should be the response from the environment to building back better. I also want to invite you, if you are a member state representative, that does not have a permanent mission in Nairobi. And if you follow UNEP matters or are accredited, or even if you are not accredited, but your government can you know, provide you with the letter of credentials to please engage, you can be part of UNEA, this being a virtual UNEA. Also, if you represent an accredited non-governmental organization, contribute to the global major groups, but also send a video message 
that we will make available in the leadership dialogues that will address this important topic of COVID. I think that you will be hearing very important insights from member states, leaders that will be speaking after me. So I will stop here. And if there is time to answer any question, I will be extremely pleased to do so. But in the meantime, let me hand the floor back to you, Bruno. I see our wonderful and committed president, Sveinu Rotterbatten, has, who has been leading this uh, tremendous effort in organizing the first ever virtual UNEA and my gratitude to him and all members of the Bureau. So back to you, Bruno. Thank you so much, Jorge, for setting the scene and uh, for uh, sharing this insight on how, how UNEA uh, comes to life in just uh, two weeks. Excellency uh, Minister uh, uh, and President, uh, it is really an, an honor to have uh, you with us today to, to set up the, the presidency priorities for this UNEA. Uh, we've worked together, UNEP and the presidency now for a really long time being uh, uh, really uh, uh, led by uh, the Norwegian inspiration into a successful and ambitious agenda. So the word is yours. Thank you, Claire. Uh, excellencies, dear colleagues, it is a great pleasure for me to join you today. In about three weeks, we will be holding an online segment of the 5th United Nations Environment Assembly. The uh, upcoming UNEA is indeed a very special one. It will take place digitally across more than 20 time zones. Also, we are still in the midst of a global pandemic, which is affecting each and every one of us. I hope that you are all doing well, uh, considering the circumstances. The pandemic has further aggravated the economic, social, and environmental challenges we are addressing as part of the decade of action. Never has global solidarity been more needed. We, decision makers on the environment, have our role to play in getting back on track. We need to ensure that actions to stem climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution are further stepped up. The recovery must be green and it must be sustainable. The United Nations Environment Assembly is a forum particularly well suited to contribute to this. UNEA can play a role in combining climate, biodiversity and pollution actions, complementing efforts in other forums. This is essential if we are to achieve the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. UNEA is the best forum to allow us to build on our goal for a pollution-free world. For example, addressing the growing problem of marine litter will have positive effects for the management of our marine resources. It also supports actions for more sustainable consumption and production. My objective for UNEA 5 is indeed to strengthen actions for nature to achieve the sustainable development goals. At the present, however, trying to stem the pandemic is the priority. Thus, we will be meeting in an online format on February 22nd and 23rd. We will take those decisions needed to ensure that UNEP can continue its work and then reconvene in 2022. In addition, there will be the opportunity to engage on building a resilient and inclusive post-pandemic world. Another key issue is whether the online session can agree on a message to the world. The fundamental question is whether we have enough common ground to agree on a short and concise message, a message that collectively states that addressing environmental crises like climate change and biodiversity loss must continue. The Environment Assembly should use its political voice to demonstrate our shared commitment to act. In addition, we need to encourage the Climate and Biodiversity Cops and other UN fora to continue our work to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals and leave no one behind. Our response to the pandemic can be the starting point for a more sustainable future that will contribute to the eradication of poverty. We have learned the hard way 
that our relationship with nature makes us vulnerable to infection from animals like COVID-19. I look forward to hearing your views on how we can ensure UNEA is an inclusive and relevant forum, also for all of you. Especially as there are several delegations in Geneva that are accredited to UNEA. I'm looking forward to our discussions here today. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Excellency, for this uh, presentation of the ambition of uh, the Norwegian presidency, indeed putting uh, the SDG and, and get, getting to the SDGs at the center of, of, of what UNEA is also trying to achieve in this post-pandemic world. As we build back better, we need to review our relation with nature. We need to uh, uh, strengthen the action for nature and uh, we need to look at our sustainable consumption and production patterns, as, as you mentioned, and that includes, of course, looking at marine litter as uh, one of the dangers that humanity is facing. This ambition, I think, meets uh, the ambition of a number of uh, colleagues around the table and certainly of uh, uh, member states like Switzerland. And uh, it is a pleasure to now turn to uh, our good friend, uh, uh, Ambassador Franz Perez, to hear about uh, uh, Switzerland's view on uh, UNEA. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope the connection is working. Let me first thank the Chen, you, Bruno, Diana, and the whole team once again for organizing this event. And let me thank specifically the UNEA president uh, for his leadership, also for all the excellent work his team is doing and for being here with us to share his views in view of the upcoming um, UNEA session. As he said, these are special times. Um, all the difficulties uh, linked to Corona and to the pandemic makes it difficult to meet, to interact, to progress. But at the same time, it is as urgent as ever or even more urgent than ever to move ahead with ambitious agenda. Therefore, we're really glad to also to feel, not only to hear, but also to feel the commitment and the engagement of the incoming presidency. Multilateralism matters, even in virtual settings as we are uh, using right now. And it is important that all of us are willing to engage and to make full use of, what, of the tools that we are having, of the virtual tools that we are having in order to progress. We have accomplished much over the course of the last 50 years. And UNEP took the lead over these 50 years, setting the political agenda for the environment, collecting the scientific information that is needed in order to progress, and catalyzing and stimulating also action and support on the ground. Good governance is a response to that. And UNEA 5 will be one of these important steps in order to progress within that good governance towards more ambitious. UNIA will be an important meeting and we really hope and look forward to have good discussions, but not only good discussions, but also good outcomes. UNIA 5.1, the first part, will have to adopt the political agenda for the next years. It will have to give a signal, a strong signal, that even in times of the pandemics, we are committed, ministers are committed, to meet together, meet together, to work together, and to uh, continue their engagement for the protection of the global environment. So we have to set the political agenda through two ways. First, by adopting the midterm strategies, the program of firm and the budget, as it was well prepared. This midterm strategy is more than a technical pro uh, document. This midterm strategy is also uh, the, the outlining the next uh, phases in our political commitment. It's also a political document. So it is really important that this document will be adopted. This is laying the ground for UNEP, for all of us uh, to continue and to strengthen our engagement for the protection of the environment. Secondly, we also hope, as the president has said, that UNEA 5.1 will deliver a strong political message. And we are looking forward to work together with the incoming president and with all our partners to have a document ready that can be adopted uh, uh, at UNEA 5.2. Thirdly, UNEA 5.2, in addition to these direct outcomes, will also have to set the agenda for the next year up to UNEA 
at so at Junior 5.1, we have to set the agenda up to Junior 5.2 and to make sure that Junior 5.2, when we can hopefully meet physically again, will be able to adopt also robust decisions on substance, on substance such as on uh, establishing a scientific body uh, looking at chemicals and waste issues, on substance such as addressing emerging issues such as uh, climate altering technologies and measures, but also on substance like preparing the way towards another important conference, Stockholm plus 50 in the year 2020. And I would say that's also substance, Junior 52 should also be the moment where we celebrate the 50th anniversary of UNEP. So we have to outline to agree on the next steps and outline the pathway towards UNEP 52 towards the UNEF 52 that will uh, celebrate at a special event the 50th anniversary of UNEP and that will also provide an input and a stimulus for the Stockholm Plus 50 conference that then will take place later next year in Stockholm. We are also looking forward to good discussions in the Open Ending Working Group, uh, in the Open Ending CPR before UNEA and then also during UNEA uh, and we are looking forward to get, to give and to receive a strong signal for ambitious at the next union. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Franz. Uh, and and yes, UNEA 5 is a, 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 a starting point, really, of an incredible agenda that will culminate in UNEA 5.2. And as you said, linked, interlinked with so many of, of the other uh, events that will come in 2021, 2022, the different COPs, and that uh, really have all together the potential to make a change uh, that so that humanity addresses the three planetary crises that we are facing, pollution, loss of biodiversity, climate change. And in order to do that, and Jorge, you've alluded to this, uh, at UNEP we engage with uh, strongly with civil society as well. Uh, we will have for the first time, you said, uh, a youth, uh, UNEA, this is a great step. Uh, and and I think the youth has, has told us, has shown us, even in pandemic time, uh, not only their resilience, but their wish that we act uh, to uh, get to them a, a, a planet that, 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 that is uh, sustainable uh, uh, for their future and the future of uh, their own uh, generation and generation to come. Uh, Patricia, you are leading uh, in uh, Europe on uh, this engagement and we'd like to hear from you uh, the perspectives uh, of civil society uh, in its entirety, please. Thank you, Bruno. Um, Mr. President, Excellencies, Dear colleagues at UN Environment, um, thank you very much for the invitation to speak to you today um, on behalf of the major groups and stakeholders. Um, I'm one of uh, the two elected regional facilitators for the European region to support civil society in this process. So I'm very happy to, to engage with you today. So, well, as we've heard, um, the pandemic has put the brakes in our lives. Um, but it calls for very courageous political decisions now to attain an equitable and sustainable future. And uh, we have been very strongly advocating for the Sustainable Development Goals, the Paris Agreement and the other commitments um, that um, the governments have made under the multilateral environmental agreements um, to be the compass for the recovery. So um, we all hope that you are with us to speed up global environmental decision making as the negative effects um, on our and our planet's health um, are not slowing down. We uh, support very strongly the, the president of UNEA with his ambition to make UNEA, um, to make use of UNEA's political voice um, and for you to lay out your government's very strong ambitions and actions for this uh, super year um, for nature, which is now happening in 2021. And of course, onwards to the full meeting of UNEA 5 um, in February next year. Uh, we also support the president um, when he underscores the, the crucial importance of making clear um, progress in the other multilateral fora for the environment. Um, in, um, with implementation of the Paris Agreement, the negotiations of the post-2020 biodiversity framework, um, and of course also the framework um, on chemicals and waste, um, which is all up for discussion this year. So we believe that UNEA 5 is um, our opportunity to recognize and to cherish the true value of the services that intact ecosystems can provide us with, 
um, and also independent from our human needs, um, um, an opportunity to acknowledge that nature is a value of its own. So um, we believe that UNEA 5 um, should address um, and discuss how we can make sure that we can hold those to account um, that destroy and pollute our ecosystems um, and how we can advance with legally binding measures to hold um, um, companies liable for environmental harm across the value chain. We also believe that we need to intensify the discussion on the strong protection um, that is needed for those women and men at the front line, our environmental defenders, who are threatened and even killed when called out, when calling out harm, harmful practices. Um, so we call on all of you to make sure that this UNEA 5 process will result in a rethinking um, of our notion of development to one that's in harmony with nature. We hope that you are uh, ready to take courageous decisions um, to end harmful practices um, and to phase out polluting technologies um, and to propose um, policies um, for a just transition um, to support those who are most impacted um, by environmental degradation and, and climate change. Um, before I close, uh, let me just mention three um, points that we believe are particularly important um, around UNEA 5. Um, the first one is that we as civil society are very strongly in support of the process that has followed um, the UN General Assembly Resolution 73333, formerly known as the Global Pact for the Environment. And we hope that all of you can re-engage in this urgent discussion, how we can close the gaps in international environmental law and how we can improve its um, enforcement. We believe there's no reason to wait um, to uh, take up this discussion um, until 2022. We believe it's time now to um, plan for a uh, roadmap and we hope that um, uh, in 2022, UNEA 5.2 will be the moment where we will have already kicked off a process um, to establish a global action plan to strengthen and enforce environmental law um, by 2025. The second one, and the president has mentioned it, is of course that we hope that we can maintain the momentum towards UNEA 5.2 to adopt a mandate to start negotiations for a legally binding instrument to tackle plastic pollution. Um, I can just reassure you that this is really the biggest hope um, of civil society that we have um, around this UNEA 5 process, that UNEA can deliver on plastic pollution with a very concrete outcome. And I believe we need these good news um, and we need to prove um, that UNEA can deliver these solutions. And uh, very um, lastly, um, let me also remind you that or raise your awareness um, on the need to support civil society in the UNEA process. Um, I think we have a lot to bring to the table, not only our expertise in environmental policies, but also our connection to those communities and people um, on the ground who are most affected by environmental degradation and climate change. We can help to increase the legit legitimacy of the process um, and also um, help to get the support from larger parts of societies for what you excellencies discuss and negotiate um, at the UNEA. So we need your support, not only to have a place at the table, um, but also a financial support to play a meaningful um, role in the process. So we would like to call on you to consider investments in civil society, where colleagues come forward with good ideas on how to increase civil society engagement in the process. Thank you very much for your attention and we're very much looking forward to the upcoming events this month and hope um, to be engaging with you um, further. Yeah, uh, for uh, this, for showing and, and sharing with us the views uh, from civil society and, and the rich agenda that uh, you would like us to promote. I think it resonates with the ambitions as well that we've heard from uh, uh, from the presidency and from uh, uh, member states. And, and this is an ambition that hopefully uh, we can achieve. And I say hopefully, but, but deep in my heart, I, 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 I am certain that we're going to make progress because uh, we have no choice. In fact, uh, uh, this is really uh, the last decade that we have uh, to make this uh, SDG uh, work and achieve them. Uh, I, uh, Diana, I think we're still waiting for uh, Joyce to join us. She was in, in another uh, online platform and there she is. I see her name coming on. That's wonderful. <laughs> Joyce, good afternoon. 
and and really appreciate that you can join us. Uh, uh, I was just telling the audience that you were in a, in another meeting just just before and now able to join us for uh, this. Uh, 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 presentation of what UNEA is. We've heard from uh, the presidency, we've heard the ambition uh, from uh, its priorities and, and, and the ambition also that member states have. We've heard uh, the ambition that civil society would like us to have and, and, and really they're putting us to the challenge and it's really good. And now from you, uh, Joyce, I think we'll, we'll uh, get a uh, more knowledge about uh, what we do for people, for nature and for the planet with this UNEA and with the medium term strategy. Joyce, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Bruno. Can you hear me? We do. Oh, great. Uh, thank you, Bruno. And uh, I don't know if UNEA president is there. I would like to honor his presence and acknowledge the government of Norway. Uh, our friends from Switzerland as well, including uh, Ambassador Franz Perez, I want to recognize, uh, as well as the participants and my colleagues. Um, thank you very much for joining this very important session at an extremely important uh, time as we are leading up to UNEA 5 uh, Part 1, as my colleagues, I'm sure, have briefed you. I think one, let me start off by saying that uh, as UNEP, as part of the larger UN system, uh, we very much look at Geneva as an important uh, city, but also home for our regional office and a very active uh, international community. Geneva, as all of you know, is, uh, a, is the seat of 181 permanent missions and many international organizations, uh, most of whom have been great supporters of UNEP, great friends of UNEP, but also advancing uh, the work of UNEP uh, to address the critical environmental challenges. So I want to thank our partners and our friends who are located in Geneva as well as member states. Uh, we have been using these types of briefings to share and exchange information on the deliberations of UNEA and UNEP-related issues uh, to member states, um, including those who do not have the presence here in Nairobi. As you have heard from the previous speakers, we are just a couple of weeks away from the first ever virtual UN Environment Assembly, which will be followed by a resumed session in 2022. Uh, the virtual UNEA will approve a medium-term strategy, program of work, and budget for UNEP, the core heart of our operation. So we are very much looking forward to engaging with all the stakeholders, including the civil society, member states, and others in this very important uh, meeting. As such, 2021, uh, for us, for UNEP, for the environment family, is extremely important, important to regroup and to re-equip ourselves for the challenges ahead. And uh, we look forward to actually having substantive discussions with member states and stakeholders on our substantive work that we and strategy that we have outlined in our medium-term strategy, which will cover the period of 2022 and 2025. I want to just briefly touch upon what are the three uh, priority areas, because we want to sharpen our focus, do transformational work to deliver on what member states are expecting from us. The MTS for 2022-2025 is aimed at addressing three planet, planetary crises, climate crisis, the biodiversity crisis, as well as the pollution and waste crisis. Uh, we, as in UNEP, together with our partners, we will tackle the three planetary crises by developing responses and solutions that are actually targeted. So another focus is a stronger focus on results, which is clearly outlined in our program of work, uh, as well as the MTS. We will draw on our core competencies, science policy interface, 
the Environmental Governance Foundation. So science and environmental governance are cross-cutting foundations that actually we look forward to help us to deliver on those um, uh, three priority areas that um, I have uh, touched upon. But also we will continue to work on our work in the area of finance and economic transformations. Science has already told us that for us to, and for the environmental challenges to be addressed, we also need to look at systemic transformations and issues. So programs such as the uh, financial, uh, the FI, UNEP FI and others will continue. Uh, and that would also allow us to reach a wider uh, audience in terms of partners across the globe. We will, and we are very excited, we will deploy digital technologies to systematically integrate environmental data, knowledge and insight. So we have an exciting newer uh, program called Digital Transformation as we are looking ahead with the fourth industrial resolution. Um, we're looking forward to embed that work into uh, our program of work. Uh, but more importantly as well, we're looking at catalyzing using projects to actually catalyze transformational results. So we have a much stronger, sharper focus on results because we recognize that member states are investing in us. They're using taxpayers' money to invest in, uh, in us and we have an obligation to actually deliver on results. As we seek to rebalance the relationship between people and planet, 2021 also provides us with a unique opportunity to continue and kickstart the global movement through the UN decade for ecosystem restoration that will be launched uh, on World Environment, Environment Day this, uh, this year. Uh, we also, as part of this reflection of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are seeing that we need to pay far greater attention to environmental health if we are to secure human health. So we will deepen our work with other UN families in, uh, on risk analysis, on ramping up on our antimicrobial resistance and work closely with member states on institutional structures. But a big piece of the people and nature puzzle will also depend on our, sex, on our success in fixing the food system. UNEP is contributing to the UN Food System Summit convened by the UN Secretary General because at the end of the day, a climate safe world is the foundation of food security. Likewise, in this ocean decade for science, we will work very closely with UNESCO and other partners to jointly develop pathways for sustainable blue economies and technologies and solutions that can tackle marine litter and plastic pollution as well as land-based uh, pollution. In this context, I am proud that UNEP facilitated and supported the ad hoc open-ended expert group on marine litter and I look forward to placing UNEP at the service of member states in the next steps uh, for this process. And some of my colleagues who are connected played a key role. So these are quick highlights, which are by no means exhaustive, but I end by calling for your continued guidance and help to secure the well-being of people, economies, societies, and planet. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, jo Joyce, really, for uh, these words and and indeed for people, for nature, for planet. It, it can't be anything else. And it is really about uh, 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 getting our act together. And you mentioned the cooperation also with other UN agencies, the global agenda, the One Health, the food system, uh, the this decade for ecosystems restoration as well. All of this participate to uh, uh, the what, what UNEP wants to deliver, and UNEA is that very important moment 
at the start of the decade to um, create that movement uh, towards sustainability and make it real. Uh, as you said also, and, and, and other colleagues have mentioned that we, we are in Geneva, although online, and a number of ambassadors uh, and permanent representatives have joined us. And uh, I think we already have a question or a request to, to speak from our colleague, the ambassador of Peru, Her Excellency, uh, Miss Silvia Elena Alfaro Espinosa. Uh, so, uh, Diana, can I ask you if, if it's, would it be possible to connect uh, Her Excellency? Her Excellency is already promoted on the she, panel. She's with us, Her Excellency. Good afternoon and good to see you again. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Can, can you listen to me? Can you hear me? We do. Me? Can we do you hear see you. me? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pozzi. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. I am Silvia Faro, Ambassador and Permanent Representative of Peru in Geneva. Uh, I want to thank uh, all the panelists for their excellent presentations and for the opportunity given to the permanent missions in Geneva to be engaged in the process towards the UNEA 5. This is particularly relevant for a country like Peru with no diplomatic representation in Nairobi. In, in, in our case, we are accredited to UNEP from Geneva, and I am also the permanent representative of Peru to the Nairobi-based organizations. However, despite the distance, we are fully committed with UNEP's work, and we do our best to ac actively participate in its debates. I am also happy to confirm that the Minister of Environment of Peru, Mr. Gabriel Quijandria, will participate at the leadership dialogue of UNEA 5, and we look forward for an interactive and rich exchange on how the environmental dimension of sustainable development can contribute to build back better and a post-pandemic world as its main theme of discussion. I want to take this opportunity to reiterate Peru's support to the presidency of Minister Rotevat from Norway and the document with political messages to be adopted as an outcome of the first segment of the UNEA 5 in late February this year. As we have expressed in the Committee of Permanent Representatives in Nairobi, as well as in the ad hoc consultations organized by the UNEA presidency, we believe it is important for the UNEA to have a political message in order to maintain its visibility in its relevance as the world's highest level decision-making body on the environment, able to address the critical environmental challenges facing the world today. Here in Geneva, as well as New York, we have been able to adopt substantive documents and we do not see why Nairobi should be an exception. In that sense, we are pleased to see that there is a growing consensus around the political message outcome, outcome and we fully trust the presidency in being able to successfully finalize the document. Dear Minister, let me also assure you of Peru's full support and engagement towards a successful second part of the UNEA 5 to be held in February 2022. We will continue to engage constructively for achieving results in important areas such as marine litter and plastic pollution, as well as in waste and chemical management, just to mention two areas in which my country attaches great importance. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best during your tenure in challenging circumstances due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Good afternoon from Geneva. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Ambassador, for, for these words. And, and, and we are joined as well by uh, the Special Envoy Ambassador uh, Hans Bratska, uh, who is, I think, also online. Uh, we're going to go uh, into the Q&A. Uh, maybe, um, Ambassador, I could, uh, uh, Special Envoy, I could turn to you as well, uh, if you want to, uh, after the intervention of our colleague from uh, Peru. Thank you so much, uh, Bruno, and uh, thank you so much, uh, 
uh, ambassador and a former colleague because I was posted to uh, uh, Geneva until uh, uh, this uh, past summer. And, uh, and I'm now a special envoy here at the Ministry of uh, Climate and uh, Environment. And I'm very grateful for the very strong support that we received from all of you. And in particular, of course, the message we heard from uh, uh, the permanent representative uh, just now, and also with the good news that um, her minister will participate in the high level uh, segment uh, coming up in uh, a little over two weeks. Uh, so thank you again for that very strong uh, statement and uh, strong support. Uh, we are very grateful for that. And it's also uh, very good to hear from, uh, uh, from uh, a country such as Peru, uh, which do not, does not have a representation in Nairobi, but certainly has an important and vital role to play in the work leading up to uh, UNEA part, uh, UNEA 5, part 1, as well as part 2. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Ambassador, and good to see you uh, again, indeed, uh, in your new functions. Uh, um, I think we've got a number of questions that have been put in the chat, and our colleague from the Geneva Environment Network, Malu, is uh, collecting them. So, Malu, maybe if you could give us one or two, and then I'll turn to colleagues online to, to, to try to answer these questions. There's a lot of interest, of course, and uh, we have uh, still about 10 minutes, I guess. Yes, hello, good afternoon to everybody. We have a question from Sophie Hunter to UNEPT. I am wondering why there isn't a more intensive push in the UN COVID-19 related project to incorporate the sustainability and environmental dimension. I am part of a UNDA COVID-19 project dealing with SMEs, com competition, consumer protection in developing countries, which is clearly lacking the sustainable comment component. And we have a question from Philippe. The scientific data is available indicating that economic growth has come at a devastating impact to the environment. What more is needed to enforce stricter environmental measures, not only within the private sector, but also within governmental subsidies? The UN and member states were successful in implementing the Montreal Protocol and we need similar and swift implementation actions to avoid more environmental degradation and the restoration of nature. That's it for the moment. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Malu. So, if if uh, it's in an attempt to maybe summarize, or, or I think we've got the first question that looks at at the in, the relation COVID nineteen environment, probably environment degradation. Uh, 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 Joyce, dear executive uh, deputy executive director, you 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 mentioned the One Health as also being part of what we uh, are pushing. Do you want to say a few words on this, maybe? Thank you, Malo, for a very good uh, question. So uh, I'll answer the question in two ways. Um, following the uh, emergence of the uh, pandemic last year, uh, UNEP, uh, given our mandate, uh, we worked with other partners to actually try and understand the science behind zoonotic studies. So one, I would like to mention if you have not seen we have a very nice um, a publication which came out i believe in june 2020 to better understand the links between environment and human health grounded on science uh, more recently just uh, last week or earlier this week uh, we have joined hands with our un uh, sisters and brothers who fao um, the animal, uh, I can't remember the exact acronym, organization, OIE, <laughs> OIE thank you, and formed an, uh, an initiative actually uh, called One Health. And the idea there, again, is to understand not only the links between um, zoonotics, viruses, as well as environment and the emergency, but also to reflect on the lessons that have come up uh, from COVID-19 to uh, uh, mitigate uh, potential um, links. So we will be uh, communicating more. There is more information on the One Health Initiative and my colleague uh, Bruno, who is there with uh, other UN agencies can provide more information. Thank you. 
certainly thanks a lot Joyce and we will on the GEN website uh, uh, make sure that all the links to these publications and uh, the One Health initiative are reflected so that uh, uh, you can consult them. Uh, the other question I think was more related to the environmental governance. Franz, you alluded to this, uh, uh, Patricia as well, so may I turn to you? It's, it's the link, uh, um, how do we basically uh, uh, link, uh, if I if I summarize, uh, the economic growth and uh, strengthening of uh, of the environmental governance? Thank, thank you very much, and, and, and thank you for the for the question. Um, I think what I would respond to that first of all, governance is critical. We need um, a governance system that allows countries to engage, to identify the challenges that we are facing and to develop policies in order to address uh, these uh, challenges and then also to uh, implement and to stimulate implementation. And these are the three core functions of UNEP, uh, to provide the scientific information, robust information based on which then a uh, political decision can be taken. And to provide a forum like UNEA where such decision, decisions based on the scientific uh, findings can be taken. And thirdly, to stimulate and catalyze uh, action on the ground by stimulating the whole UN machinery to provide support uh, to countries to, to uh, implement and by providing overarching policy guidance. So I think governance is critical in order to advance. UNEP is at the heart of the uh, governance in order to advance. And I think uh, at the end, if we are not advancing as much as we would like, then it's certainly not UNEP as such to blame. It's not Nairobi, it's not Geneva, it's not New York to blame. It's uh, us to blame because we are not doing sufficiently so that the members of UNEP, the countries, are really also taking ambitious positions in these negotiations. Thanks. Thanks, Franz. Uh, Patricia, do you want to, to compliment or? Yes, sure. Just just very briefly. Um, well, as I've as I've uh, outlined uh, in my previous intervention, I mean, we as civil society, I mean, we we strongly believe that there's um, a lot of scope to um, well improve. Um, international environmental governance um, and uh, well, the, the, you know, the gaps have been identified and they have been discussed, but we believe that uh, the UNEA process should be the forum where these discussions are continued and intensified. And we also believe that, um, yeah, it's time to develop a kind of a, a roadmap of how to, to address the gaps and also to, um, for instance, um, strengthen the links between the different agreements that we have and uh, also uh, maybe you know, codify certain principles that exist in, in certain um, in, in certain um, agreements, but that are not kind of um, present um, um, as overarching principles. So I think there's a lot of uh, work that uh, can be done, and, and we're happy to take part in, in that. Um, and then on the kind of uh, question of, uh, you know, economic growth and environmental uh, governance and law, um, well, we also believe that uh, the UNEA process could be a place where um, this discussion could also be um, held in a, in a more uh, critical way. There's more and more voices also from the institutional sides, not only science, but also from institutions. Um, for instance, I mean, speaking from a European perspective, our European Environmental Agency, for instance, um, has quite uh, uh, stepped up its work on the question of uh, uh, economic growth and uh, reaching our environmental objectives and has started to take a much more critical stance towards the question of environmental growth and the promise of uh, of green or sustainable growth and how to um, ensure that we don't uh, fall in, in the same traps that we've been into. So I think uh, we, we believe that uh, the UNEA process could also be a place where we take up that discussion in, in a more uh, critical way and also, um, yeah, include uh, all the stakeholders in that discussion. So um, that, that um, point is, is very welcome. Thanks a lot, Patricia. Uh, Malu, um, I'm look, watching the clock as well, but uh, we maybe still have time for one question. I, I'm sorry, I know there are a lot, but uh, uh, can you pick one? Yes, we have a question from Mustafa Kamal of ILO. In the virtual format, will the UN and other intergovernmental organizations be able to provide substantive statements and inputs during the UNEA session? Thanks a lot. It's a very important question as well, indeed. And if 
colleagues agree, I, may, I might turn to uh, Ambassador uh, Bratskar and to uh, Jorge to answer this. Uh, maybe starting uh, uh, with, with Jorge? Yes, absolutely. And thank you very much for that question from the ILO colleague. Indeed, uh, um, despite this being a short UNEA, we have created an opportunity uh, for all UN organizations to provide a message, uh, a video message that can be uh, part of the leadership dialogues that will take place 22 and 23 of February on the topic that has already been indicated, that it is the contribution of the environmental dimension to a building a resilient uh, post-COVID world. And therefore, we have provided a number of guiding questions and we invite any organization to submit a statement. We have reached out to all multilateral environmental agreements with particular requests, but also Obviously, sister agencies that want to contribute are welcome to do so. We are happy to follow up pri privately with you, but uh, in on, on the modalities. But yes, a video message is absolutely welcome. And that will be part of the proceedings of UNEA and will be taken into account in the in in the summaries of the leadership dialogues. Over to you. Thanks, Jorge. Ambassador, do you want to compliment? Uh, yes, maybe just very, very, uh, very quickly. I think that uh, these questions are certainly very welcome, and I think that uh, it also shows us that uh, how important the leadership uh, dialogues uh, will be. And I think that we have been uh, all of us uh, spot on when we have uh, uh, when we have said that the theme for the ministerial and leadership dialogues should be uh, um, for the online session the contribution of environmental dimensions of sustainable development to building a resilient and inclusive post-pandemic uh, world. And I think uh, listening to you uh, this afternoon and hearing your questions, I think uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, an interesting and engaging discussion coming up in, in two and a half weeks on these very, very important and timely and pertinent uh, issues. So thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Ambassador. And I think with this, we will uh, come to a close of this uh, session of the Geneva Environment Network. Uh, this was uh, the high level briefing just before the fifth session of the uh, United Nations Environment Assembly, which will be online for its first part and hopefully a physical meeting in 2022 as well. Uh, it, it is an ambitious agenda in front of us. It is an ambitious uh, medium term strategy and it is uh, uh, the beginning of the, the crucial decade to achieve the SDGs. Uh, together uh, we can, I would say, as a conclusion, uh, uh, we have to uh, uh, go to our table, work, work hard, uh, get uh, the transformation going and uh, uh, really uh, be driven by this ambition to have a positive impact uh, to solve the three planetary crises and to leave no one behind uh, on our planet Earth. Thanks a lot, colleagues. Thanks to all uh, the panelists. Thanks uh, to those who attended. There was a large uh, audience today. I'm, I'm really happy and I know that the GEN is organizing uh, another event very soon. Please stay connected on their webpage, on uh, their Facebook and other social media. Uh, uh, very active uh, as usual. And uh, thanks to the GEN team for all the support. I wish you all a good afternoon and a good UNEA 5.